All right, so pre in the previous demo, you have seen me using a Docker Compose to create these containers. Now, using these containers and Ansible, we would be configuring these two as application servers. So I would feed in, again, we're talking about infrastructure as a code. I already have some Ansible code written in the form of YAML, um, and that includes certain roles, as well as inventory, as well as playbooks. And uh, that's what I want to feed into Ansible controller. And this Ansible controller will connect over SSH onto these two nodes and uh, configure everything that is needed to run a web application. So what is gonna run on top of this is gonna be uh, Pache, then it would uh, configure PHP, and then it is going to deploy a PHP application on top of that. That's gonna be the web server, uh, and that's what gets configured on both of these nodes. And we do that through Ansible. So let's have a look at that. So here we are with the Ansible demo, there's the same repository which also has the Ansible code. So if you go to the Ansible directory, you have all the you know files here, including the Ansible playbooks, roles, inventory. So there are three things that you should, or four things that you should know about. One of that is roles. So roles, if you observe the roles, this represents the applications. Typically, uh, you know, involves you create one role per application that you want to configure. And a role looks like this. A role has certain tasks. Tasks is where you define, again, Ansible also uses a YAML format. And this is where you define how and what you want to configure and in which sequence in terms of the system resources that could include, let's say, installing packages. For example, in this case, PHP would involve just installing certain packages. So it is going to install these three packages, PHP, PHP MySQL, and Nmap. And uh, that's pretty much it. Or uh, there's one more package there. And uh, that's pretty much it. So um, this is how the tasks look like. Again, it is a declarative code. We are not defining how to install anything here. We're just defining what to install. And that's the difference between a scripted code and Ansible. And uh, here we have the playbooks. Uh, this is the inventory. Inventory is where you define which nodes to configure. So I have defined the nodes with the host names, app1, app2, and uh, that's it. Uh, however, this could be IP addresses. You could also define the connection strings, like which users, which what is the password or the key, and everything else required. These are the playbooks, including this site.yaml. So this is what we run with Ansible. So with Ansible, we define or we run the playbooks and the playbooks will call the role. So playbooks contain, hey, which host run what? And uh, this has all been configured. So we ha I have roles for Apache PHP and the PHP application. And I'm gonna use the same setup that I launched with Docker Compose earlier. So I just run Docker Compose up hyphen d and i have that setup back available again this is the beauty of infrastructure as a code you can recreate reproduce the same setup any number of times or whenever you want even this could be after two years down the line and you would get the exact same setup with the same specifications because it's all again the code and this is where i have checked out the git repository and i'm in the same directory that i showed you the code for which contains the ansible configuration which points to inventory etc and this is the playbook this is an example of a playbook where you see that the host and the roles mapping so the app servers are going to run apache php and uh, front end and then these are the tasks Again, I, um, on the left hand side, you can browse through the file. This is another tool, um, you know, uh, which is a web based editor and you also get a terminal on the right hand side. So this is my inventory. And what I'm going to show you is how you could rapidly configure your applications and deploy those using Ansible in a very consistent um, and, you know, quick, rapid as well as consistent way and this is a code so you can launch it anywhere you can configure as many servers as you want it depends on your inventory configuration so i have two servers in my inventory but this could be 200 servers as well 
the um, amount of efforts that would require there would just be adding the con you know those server details in the inventory files right so ansible or any automation tool like this would make your life much easier as a devops engineer or a devops you know a practitioner rather and if you observe the output it is installing configuring everything on its own so it's just one time effort to write this code and test it and you can use it you know for years and years to come and it's been configured just look at how easy it was to use and run this code and i can give this code to anyone and you know they can run this as a playbook and that's it so they are done with the configuration that's it and uh, i can see the apache being running on both of my servers this is how i access it it's through docker and then the application has already been configured as well so it not only installed apache and php but also has deployed a php application on top of the web servers and that's just amazing it takes you know just few minutes and least amount of efforts to install and configure anything if i have the playbooks written and created for it and that again is the beauty of uh, infrastructure as a code and one of the other feature that i want to show you and demonstrate to you here is the idempotence what is idempotence idempotence is a property by which ansible has the intelligence to know when and whether to run a particular task or not if you observe the first time the output was all yellows which was like it made the changes the second time it has skipped almost everything not not almost but it has skipped everything because it knows that that configuration was already been done so unless there is a change it does not need to do anything anymore so i'm going to just change the state so this can happen right so somebody can go and manually change something on a server and that's what i'm trying to simulate here so i stop a service or uh, apache service on one of the servers and then i go back and run ansible playbook again the same code and now it knows that oh that particular server does not have that service running so it is only going to change the state of the service nothing else so there's only one yellow line that you see there and that is an item potence so that is the intelligence that ansible has through which it knows when to make changes and when to skip and now that the service has started you will see that this time ansible simply skips it and where this is useful is you can keep running this code over and over again as a scheduled job and whenever there is a change it would automatically be propagated to the servers that require it and that was a quick demo of how ansible can be used to quickly and automatically configure the servers and the applications on top of existing infrastructure